Welcome back, everybody. Eric Hoagland. We are now in the next phase of our gray top. Uh, we shown you last night, we went over the seal coat, uh, how to get smooth edges. Um, so we're at the next step. Uh, we're approaching the flood coat, but there's a couple of crucial things before flood coat. Things you really need to fix now, or it's going to cost you that flood coat, and you're going to end up pouring over. So let me flip you around, show you a couple things. We're going to go over some stuff. I'm going to show you some really cool vein techniques. We're going to put uh, we're going to put white veins all through this guy. He's going to be really pretty. Take a look. He turned out marvelous just for a seal coat. And I want to point out right out the gate, we've got a little guy right here. So as it was coming about somehow or another, that guy fooled me. Never got closed up. No big deal at all. He'll cover right up in the flood coat. Our edges are just as slick as they can be, like they're supposed to be. So what I want to show you, though, since I make these from scratch, I, I've made this one out of birch, just like anything else that's made out of wood, you're going to get these uh, tiny little pricklies. There's, I don't know, there ain't probably three or four in this whole span maybe four or five going down the whole stretch. Nevertheless, they're there. As minor as those seem and seem to be, there's another one right there. What I recommend doing is taking a piece of sandpaper. It is 320 grit. I'm gonna use just a little piece of this guy right here, just on the edge. And all you wanna do is you want to take this guy and you just want to smooth that guy right out. You're not looking to mess your top up. You're not looking to put a bunch of lines in it. Just like that, that simple. I'm gonna do that to about the 10 or so that's going around here, because what's gonna happen is when we put this flood coat on and everything goes to self-level, it's gonna flow right over the front very smoothly like a waterfall. And just like in a waterfall, when something goes through it, it breaks that waterfall chain. So any of those guys left on there before the flood coat rolls over and it's going to cause that little line to stop and separate and that's what's going to cause you to have a run in the flood coat and you'll be repouring, which is very expensive. So I'm going to finish these out, get right back to the vein techniques. All right, so we got those all out. Uh, there was about 10 to 15 total. Uh, again, just easy buffing. You're not you're not trying to put a bunch of scratches in your piece or anything. Um, I cleaned that rim all the way around, cleaned the edge all the way around, cleaned the top, denatured alcohol, so it's been long enough. It's already dry. Uh, we can get all the dust and debris, anything from just sitting. So the next thing I want to show you is um, one vein technique. Uh, a lot of people love the granite look, the quartz look. So what, what I sometimes use, um, I've seen this on Stone Cold Countertops, very cool product. It's called Montana Marble Spray. So a lot of people know about this, a lot of people don't. It's a great technique, however, it does have downsides. Um, it is, it is kind of tall, if you will, sitting on top. So there's always a risk when you go to flood coat that it doesn't completely cover. If it don't completely cover, you're going to have to flood coat again, which most people know is very expensive. So, uh, one way you can help yourself and actually fix that, once it sprays out, once it hits the table, um, you can, any, any sort of uh, big globs, anything like that that hit the table, take a popsicle stick, take and, and poke at it. Get that air bubble to pop in that vein, if you will. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Take a look. And keep in mind, there's no rhyme or reason. There's no uh, worries. It, it's kind of, you just want to play with it. It kind of does its own thing, but there is some technique involved. You don't want too much in one place and so on. So once you kind of figure out, uh, I'm going to make this one kind of flow in a uh, diagonal pattern. We're going to have some tail whips in there. We're going to get kind of cool with him but I don't want him to take over the whole piece. So, here we go. Just like that. Look at that guy. 
just like it. There's our first guy. So now, now what I like doing, uh, like I said, every it, it's all about the sway of your hand, uh, how hard you're hitting the trigger. Uh, a lot of things come into play, but it kind of does its own thing with the help of yourself. So now what I want to do, I love what they call a cross pattern. So now I'm going to take it and actually almost X right through that. I'm going to come right off this front edge here. X right over through it, right out that back side, and we're going to hope to hit the bowl here as we do that. We want to run right through him. So here we go. Bam. Look at that. So intersected just like I wanted. We hit the bowl, skipped out the circle, so it picked right up. Beautiful. So at this point, you know, and you can play with your piece. Um, again, I don't want to kill the entire top, but I do want it to obviously um, have a, you know, a cracked look, if you will. Um, just beautiful the way it turns out. So I'm going to add a little bit more to him here, and then we'll move right on to the next stage. Okay, so here we go. So here's what I ended up doing. Um, you had seen the... The cross pattern here so I ended up adding this guy right here so we got the part in the back that was the initial shot to the left there all the way across and then I came inside the sink base and shot out the back add a little bit to the right so now we got plenty of just natural beauty with the gray areas all by themselves. I think it's pretty neatly placed again you can add more anywhere you want you can uh, thicken it up a little bit however you want to do it what I want to point out, though, is this is what this stuff kind of does, depending on how it gets shot, what it hits, what it rolls over. So what you want to do, popsicle stick, uh, foam brush would probably be the best thing. But, you know, if you don't have one popsicle stick, something, you just want to take the bottom of that and you want to wipe and make sure all those little dust bunnies are gone. Uh, you don't want that to get stuck in the flood coat. Um, go around, you know, you just got to look everywhere, look around your entire table. Uh, they flop over in the weirdest spots. So make sure to check the table good because you don't want the resin run down one of those and, and harden like an icicle. So veining comes in all sorts of, uh, different types. Um, uh, you know, you could do thicker veins, thinner veins. This is just one technique to get veins in tops. Uh, there is God knows a hundred, uh, a hundred more. So I really like this one though. The lines are very thin and it has a cobweb approach in the veining that kind of flares off from everything and just kind of separates itself. So really cool technique. Uh, we are set to do our flood coat now. This piece looks gorgeous. Before we do, I want to show you exactly what I'm seeing on my end. So... In the last video, I told you that you can really see the wood grain in this top. And that's exactly what's below that surface. It's the wood grain finish. So these things hit on there just perfect. So all the effects in it. Very cool how it turned out. Um, so we're going to get on to the flood coat. Then after the flood coat, we will have to let it dry for three days. Uh, upon the third day, we will finish it out, sand underneath all our edges, and then I'll, um, show you what we're going to top coat it with.